In the year of 2016, an Osu map was submitted to the leaderboards for ranking, a map which would spark a $3,000 bounty and would forever cement itself as one of the most notorious Osu maps of all time. Before I talk about the saga of Yomiyori, I have to give some context of what Osu is for those who are unaware. Osu is a game created by Pepe in 2007, a game that mimicked Osu, Tetakai Oiden, and Elite Beat Agents, which was on the Nintendo DS. This game served as a, a port, in a way, of the DS game for the PC. In its early years, it looked a bit, uh, <laughs> a little scuffed, to, to say the least. But this just shows how much improvement went into the game from the years of its existence. From the beat maps themselves to the players, the game looks drastically different from when it was first released. Let's talk about some of the gameplay elements of Osu. Firstly, one of the most important things to note is what a beat map is. A beat map is just a song that is mapped to the beats of the music. We can see in the map editor that we can place down notes that correspond with what's going on musically in the song. Whether it's with single notes like this, sliders that are long and can look <laughs> all sorts of ways, Wait, what? Or spinners, which is just a test of how fast you can move your hand in circles. Now that you understand what a beat map is, we can look into some of the gameplay elements. The gameplay of Osu can look extremely different from those who are uh, starting off on the game uh, versus those who are experienced in the game. The main thing to note that stays consistent throughout everyone's playthroughs are the notes themselves. This is a single note, and this is an approach circle. Once that approach circle borders the single note, you click on the mouse. And for sliders, all you do is hold down the click and move your cursor where the slider is going. Simple enough, right? <laughs> uh, no. Now, you can get through a decent amount of the game just by doing this alone, but uh, when beatmaps get harder, faster, you're not going to be able to click with your mouse and aim consistently. So, uh, <laughs> how do people do this? Well, uh, it's it's quite straightforward, actually. They use their keyboard. Instead of clicking with their mouse, they click with their keyboard, binding keys to their right and left click so they can focus on aiming with their aiming hand and they can tap their notes with their other hand. Now, just because I told you how to do it doesn't mean it's easy by any means, but it makes it a lot easier to actually hit the notes consistently without your cursor shaking like a madman. So yeah, now that you understand everything you need to know for the context of Osu, Let's get into the behemoth of a map that is Yomi Yori. Yomi Yori Kikoyo Kouku <laughs> I can't do it. Or Yomi Yori for short, was Osu's hardest map at the time it was released, surpassing that of its predecessors. Now, uh, this map went through a bit of a journey when it was first released. It was submitted to the leaderboards for ranking on the 20th. The 28th of May 2016. It looked to have a smooth release as uh, many popular players were playtesting map and condoned it. And then <laughs> the map got disqualified for uh, a spelling mistake in the title. <laughs> yeah. Something that could have been so easily fixed made the entire map get disqualified. And honestly, the map could have potentially faded away from ranking as I don't think there are actually many beat map nominators that looked and approved the map after that. But I mean, eventually, the map was ranked on the 4th of January 2017, eight-ish months after the map was submitted. Yomiyori became infamous within the community due to it being insanely difficult and for a lot of people, literally impossible to play. Not in the sense that the map was not passable, but the map was so difficult that nobody could full combo the map. To get a perfect combo of 4,353, was unthinkable at the time. The song Yomi Yori is eight minutes long. That is an absurd amount of time to play one map in Osu, let alone the hardest map in Osu. A map that consisted of 220 BPM death streams, cross map jumps, sections where you needed insane finger control to not miss. <laughs> it was almost impossible to fathom anyone can beat this map, that anyone could full combo the map, but it did not stop the community from attempting the impossible.
Like I said before, the map was instantly renowned for being difficult, even the best players at the time were struggling with it. Here, we have a graph. <laughs> well, obviously. But this will show us the progression over the years until the map was finally beaten. And yes, <laughs> spoilers, the map indeed was full combo. But we definitely need to go over the history before we talk about that. The x-axis shows us the years since the map has been released, and the y-axis tells us how close someone got to full comboing the map. The reason I decided to make it this way and not by miscount is because the focus of this video is to showcase the progression of players' runs to full combo the map. There have been many players who have gotten good miscounts but haven't full comboed the map. Even players who have slider broke, which doesn't count as a miss in the game but takes their combo away. I will talk about the details of their runs when we get to those players, but first off let's start off with the player who had play tested the map before it reached its rank status, Gaze McGee. What a name. On January 4th, 2017, the day of the map's ranking, Gay set the top play on the map at 578 combo with a whopping 28 misses and a 96.8% accuracy. This, even if it looks bad to some, was actually a really good play at the time, and honestly, it still is. I cannot state enough just how difficult this map truly is. Again, the map is 8 minutes long, over 4,000 combo, 220 BPM streams and jumps. It's amazing seeing anyone get a miscount of 28 on a map this hard. Even some of the best players at the time were struggling to even pass the map, opting for difficulty mods like Halftime that make the overall experience of the map easier to play with the detriment of losing half your score multiplier. And this is where Gaze sits in the journey to beat this map. Next up, I'll go over a player named Dustus. Dustus? Dust Dice? Dust. I'm gonna go Dustus. This score was set on the same day as Gaze and immediately sniped his number one rank on the map. It didn't seem like some people actually expected Dustus to set a score like this, and fair. His consistency within the streams of the map were uh, a little less than desirable, but, but again, since the map is so difficult, I, I really can't talk much. But so far, he was the first to break the 1000 combo mark on the map, which gave a lot of people some hope for something more in the future. And then, a month later, a player comes to put his runs in. If you've heard of Osu or if you've been in the community, chances are you've heard of this player. Deemed as one of the best players of all time and by far the best player of his era, this person is none other than the GOAT himself, Cookiezy. Cookiezy has been around for many years at this point, and he was the undisputed best player of the game, setting plays that nobody would have even thought to be possible. You might recognize his play on Freedom Dive, which stands as one of the greatest plays of all time, or maybe his score on Blue Zenith, a score that spawned a meme that would haunt Osu players forever. Or maybe his play on Da 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 Da. The point is, <laughs> Cookie Z is a legend within the Osu community, and he might be the most beloved figure within it. He decided to take on the Yomiyori challenge, and at the time of recording, racked up 280 attempts on the map. It almost seemed to be suited for him. Streams, jumps, anything you threw at him seemed to be almost too easy. Cookie Z was so far ahead of his peers in his peak, and it was only natural that he would attempt to beat the impossible and conquer Yomiyori. But let's get to his run to end all runs. His combo was insane. His accuracy was was just unbelievable. This could be it. This could be the end of heartbreak.
Kugizi ended off his run with 4 misses, 2,936 combo, and a 99.07% accuracy. The community was in a frenzy. This was one of the most insane scores that I had seen at the time, and I remember when this first got set. Look at this. The players below him, even those using halftime mod to make the map easier, were not even close to matching his accuracy, and only a few of them actually surpassed the combo he achieved on half the time. I remember thinking, if Cookie Z, the best player in the world, couldn't FC the map, who would? Who could? Well, I mean, if you've seen the runtime of this video, the story of Yomiyori is far from over. Let's start this section off with putting Cookie Z at his well-deserved spot on the graph. From here on out, it was a grind. A grind for two things. One, to beat Cookie Z's score, and two, to full combo the map. Since Cookie Z's almost godlike play on Yomiyori, there have been many attempts to dethrone his score, to push him to second in the leaderboards. This is where things get fun. First, let's talk about a player named Angel Sim. You might know him as Firebat92, or whenever he had that Mega Mean player name. He was and still is one of the top players of all time, with a peak of being second in the world. <laughs> How time flies. He decided to take on the challenge, and on June 2nd of 2017, he set this score. An 11 miss, 1,579 combo run with a 97.24% accuracy. This is an unbelievable run. 11 misses on a map like this. He seemed like he had the potential to put in a good run. As you can see when looking back at his replay, he was consistent for the most part. But the sections where things got really difficult is where his flaws kicked in. I won't talk too much in detail about every single player I'll go over because of how many players I'm going to go over, but I feel like it's respectful to talk about their achievements when it comes to a map this infamous. Here is where Angel Sim places on the graph. Next, we got our boy, Dustus. Dustus. Dustus came back with a vengeance when he set this play on June 21st, 2017, achieving a combo of 1,035, missing only 14 notes and an accuracy of 96.99. Nah, he got 97%. This was another big play at the time, finally getting rid of some of those halftime plays that flooded the leaderboard. But like most players before him, he struggled with the harder sections. No shame, of course, the map is insanely difficult. And here is where he places on the graph. Uh, I, again. The last run I'll be going over in 2017 is Carthy's run on August 10th, 2017. Now, this is a little unique because uh, Carthy actually had a better score technically within the leaderboards at the time, posing a run with uh, 880 combo and an accuracy of 90.87, the lowest we've seen so far, but I think this run is a bit better and more worthy to be on the list. He missed only 20 times on this run and ended it off with an accuracy of 94.06%. Not the greatest uh, compared to other runs we've seen previously, but it is also important to note Carthy is a very good player, and even good players struggle with difficult maps. I mean, this just shows that with everyone I've like gone over so far, even if you're insanely talented at the game, there are still going to be maps that do kick your ass. I, I say that, and yet this play is still stupidly good. Here is where Carthy currently sits on the progression graph. Moving into 2017 is where things start to really get interesting. Let's go take a look at March first. March first. Is that a reference? Nearing the end of the month, a player that had been around since 2013 decided to take on the map, Raphis. <laughs> Let me tell you about this man. Former number one player of all time during January of 2018, and still as of now sitting at 37th in the world, which is absolutely crazy considering how much time has passed. If you've been in the community for long enough, chances are you know or have heard of him. And on March 26th, he did this. Nine misses in this one section, nine more misses in this death stream, and only two misses in the hardest section, ending off the map with two more misses at the hardest finger control section. Absolutely mind-blowing. 
Truly, 1,844 combo, 27 misses, and a 96.25% accuracy. A lot of people saw this as a chance for something more, since he only generated that many misses on stream sections mostly, and if he got more consistent at that and didn't break at sections like that, we could potentially see a player to rival Cookiezy's unbeatable score. This is where Raffis places on the most influential scores on the map at the time. Five days after Raffis set his amazing score, a player named The Poon decided to step in. One of my favorite players of all time, honestly, <laughs> with a score that blew up the community. Let's look it over. He misses just a few times at the beginning before absolutely unleashing on the map. Wow. <laughs> wow. Just, just, wow. The Poon ended off his run with 2,532 combo, 16 misses, and a 98.03% accuracy. It's just absurd. He beat Raffis' previous combo by almost 700. That's 400 combo behind Cookie Z. I mean, I mean, this was crazy. And this run will always hold a special place in my heart. And this is where the Poon ranks on the graph. If there's one thing to notice out of all these scores that I've shoved in your face during the runtime of this video is that nobody could really get close to the miscount of Cookie Z. Single digits. And I feel like I have to elaborate on why this map is designed to make you miss. There are three sections within the map that I believe to be what makes Yomi Yori insanely difficult, or at least the peaks of Yomi Yori's difficulty. The beginning, the middle, and the end. Isn't that just saying the entire map is difficult? Shut, shut up, shut up you, I, I will explain. For the longest time, people struggled with the beginning of this map. Almost a minute of straight hell on earth. 220 BPM death streams thrown at your face instantly upon starting the map, before getting into a section where you immediately have to change your playstyle and move your cursor all across the screen to hit these single notes before going back into the death stream. Just glancing at this, <laughs> this is insanely hard to do. You have to be consistent with your tapping speed, along with having the ability to react to the cross screen jumps. Uh, jumps are basically just notes placed far from each other to where you have to jump from one side of the screen to the other. I think that you can understand how people miss here. But even if you manage to full combo that section and not miss any note, you still have two more insane difficulty spikes waiting for you later in the map. The next section that I want to go over is the middle section the guitar solo. Now, I can't play the audio for copyright reasons, of course, so uh, please listen on your own time if you want to hear how difficult it sounds. But yeah, this section. Fast, spaced out streams into insanely far cross map jumps that look like you have to throw your mouse off your desk to even reach. Then going into an insane spaced out burst section for finger control before moving back into a stream section that is extremely spaced out. All in 200 120 BPM. This is where Cookie Z broke. This is where the Poon broke. Well, he also broke in the beginning section, but lastly, we have the ending. Well, the, the part before the ending. This section is all in one third timing and requires precise aim and finger control. These sliders are no joke. These spaced out streams are no joke. This section, even if not as flashy as the other two, is insanely difficult. This is the last real challenge of the map. Nerves are insanely high. Stamina is getting low. Your cursor might be shaking. <laughs> this is one of the scariest parts of the map just by where it lies within it. Also, there is a section within the direct middle of the map that is insanely hard too, but I feel like these serve as more of a skill check than that one specifically. But now that I've given you some brief context as to why the map is so hard, let's talk about a player we all know and love who finally broke through and reached the status of single digit misses alongside Cookiezy. On May 1st, 2018, Carthy returned with an amazing play on the map, reaching a combo of 1,463, missing only 9 notes in an accuracy of 97.08%. Carthy became the second player with single digit misses on the map alongside the legendary Cookiezy. As one would expect, he missed on the hard sections, <laughs> but he remained very consistent throughout his run. It, it was honestly amazing to see. This is where his score sets on the graph, and though it may be lower than some, it's still a monumental step in the journey to beating Yomi Yori.
Jumping to November of 2018, we got a player that I haven't mentioned before, though possessing a decent run on the leaderboard. That player is none other than M-Law. On November 16th, M-Law set one of the best runs on Yomiuri at the time, a 2031 combo run, only missing six times with an absurd accuracy of 98.96% and almost getting a heart attack in the process while his limbs were going numb. <laughs> I can't feel my arms. Well, not that I can't feel them. I can feel them. They're just, you know that feeling when your leg is asleep? Yeah, that's my entire arm. <laughs> <laughs> who, who does he think he is? Anyway, this, this is where he places on the graph. Next, for the last play we'll look over in 2018, we have a play from someone who appeared on the graph before. You may have guessed it. It's our boy. Dustus. He had been working away on this map and grinding for a score like this, and well, he achieved something amazing. On December 19th, 2018, Dustus set this play, a run where he only missed three times. Three, yes, three. He beat Cookiezy's previous record for miscount by one miss, with the highest combo of 1,245 and an accuracy of 98.94%. Absurdly good. I think this just shows how much improvement Dust has had over the years since his play back in 2017. Now, it looks like his combo may not have improved as much, but the fact that he was able to pass this map with a miscount like this is nothing to be scoffed at. That's why when we look at where he lands on the graph, don't think that he didn't perform well because he's lower than some, but know that this graph is completely going off of combo. Same principle applies to everyone on here. All these plays are monumental, and just because one is lower than the other doesn't mean that it's worse. But yeah, this is where Dustis shows up one final time on the graph, sadly. Moving into 2019, we only have a few notable plays that I will go over. The first being from one of my favorite players, Vervalian. On March 13th, 2019, Vervalian had this run, only missing once in the beginning, hitting the insane jumps at the guitar solo before breaking and missing once more. He then proceeded to miss seven more times in the one third section at the end, a handful due to missing the pattern in note locking. He ended off the run with 2,509 combo, only nine misses, and an accuracy of 98.39%. It seems that over the years, players are lowering their miscounts little by little, but they still can't overcome the hardest sections of the map. It's one thing to practice it over and over again, but doing it live in a run with nerves being insanely high, practice can only help so much. And this is where Vervalian lands on the graph. The last play I want to look at from 2019 was from somebody that everybody who plays Osu should know. A man who took over the scene and never looked back. A man that broke what people thought to be impossible on the 1000 PP barrier. Vaxe. One of the most infamous players of all time, and definitely most influential player during his peak, Vaxe was the first person ever to break the 1000 PP barrier. I know I haven't talked about it until now, but PP, or performance points, is what determines your rank in the game. The higher the PP, the better you are. <laughs> That's a sentence. 1000 was thought to be impossible for the longest time. Only a few people ever had the potential of reaching it, and it was on some of the hardest maps ever. But anyway, Vaxe was one of those players that you could not not have heard of during this period. Holding the number two rank in the world, he attempted to finally beat the impossible with Yomiuri on September 12th, 2019 a run to almost end all runs. There was something about Vaxe that was so different than his peers. He had nerves of steel. It rarely looked like he ever got nervous within the maps he played, which most likely played into how successful of a player he became. But within the run, his first miss was at the second hardest part in the map, surpassing where Cookie Z left off years in the past. Up until the very end, Vaxe held an S rank on the map. Even though his combo went away, he didn't miss a note, but Slider broke, a mechanic that is a little hard to explain, but basically it just means he missed the timing on a slider note that doesn't result in counting as a miss even if it breaks your combo. I know, it's a it's a little little complicated, I but then 
he missed. And two more times on the last stream. 3,018 combo. Three misses and a 98.95% accuracy. Surpassing Cookiezy's combo, matching Dustus's miscount with an insane accuracy, but couldn't pass the hurdle that was Cookiezy's score. This is where Vaxe ranks on the graph. Everyone knows the year of 2020. It's synonymous with one thing and one thing only. The dethroning of Cookie Z on Yomi Yori. First off, the year started slow due to COVID rolling around most likely, but on May 4th, a player named Spare set one of the most incredible scores on the map. Oh my god! What? Utter sadness, or or maybe not, depending on how you look at it. A one miss. To make it even worse, <laughs> Spare had also one missed another Yomi Yori beat map before. <laughs> does that does that make it worse? Does that make it better? I I <laughs> I don't know. But what a goddamn score from Spare! I swear his commentary is so funny here. It's it's like he doesn't even believe what he's doing. It's a hilarious run to watch if you have the time to watch it. But Spare ended off with a combo of 2,286 with only one miss and a 98. 0.91% accuracy. If he didn't miss that note, who knows if he would have been able to finally put an end to this map and be the first to full combo. Even if he slider broke, he could have been the first S rank on the map as well. This is where Spare ends off on the graph. Next, we have a player that some of you should know, a man by the name of White Cat. If you've never heard of him, then uh, I guess you really don't know much about Osu. White Cat was rank one on Osu for a very, very long time and set many insane plays. But on June 3rd, White Cat would pull off this. Finally. <laughs> Finally. Somebody had passed that section and surpassed Cookie Z on the leaderboard. After three years, Cookie Z had finally been dethroned. White Cat had a combo of 3,825, with 10 misses and a 96.94% accuracy. Not the greatest compared to all the other scores we've seen previously, but certainly historic as he was the first to beat Cookie Z's score and put up such an insane combo in the process. To put this in perspective, White Cat was only 528 combo away from full comboing the map. Only 528. So close, yet, yet so far. White Cat wasn't very well known for his streaming abilities, but he would put on his big boy pants and grind. And grind he did. And on July 15th, 2020, he set the first ever S rank on the map. Not missing a single note and only slider breaking three times. Ending off the run with 2,793 combo, zero misses, and a 98.67% accuracy. The only problem is, uh... <laughs> his other score was technically better, so this one didn't override it. Oh, it's so sad. But it should forever be known as the first S rank on the map. Either way, on the graph, we will go with the higher combo score from White Cat, his 3,825 combo run. And this is where he lies, above the rest. There is one more score I want to look at within 2020, that being a score set by a player named Eternum. On October 20, he set one of the best scores of Yomi Ward to date. 3,577 combo, missing one time with an accuracy of 98.48%. He was right there, but succumbed to the last difficulty spike within the map, slider breaking before missing outright, a run that could have ended it all. The thing is, I haven't talked about it enough, but you could tell Eternum was insanely nervous during this run towards the end, his cursor shaking and throwing off his aim. I mean, think about it. You're playing an eight minute map, going to set history by being the first person to ever full combo the map. It would be so human to get nervous at a time like this. And sadly, whether it was nerves or pure unluckiness, he couldn't secure the FC, and this is where Eternum ranks on the graph.
There's only two plays that I want to go over in 2021. The first being a play set on March 14th, 2021 by the one and only BTMC. Now, BTMC is one of the most well-known and recognizable figures within the OSU community. Hell, you might have even seen one of his videos in the past if you clicked on this video. He is known for being insanely good at streaming. Underrated, if I'm being honest. This was his Yomiyori run. Just one slider break on the hardest section in the map. So, so close to setting history. At this point, something had to be cursed with the map. BTMC was a fingernail off of full comboing the map. And <laughs> it's heartbreaking. He ended off the run with 2,854 combo. Zero misses and 99.70. 70? 99.17% accuracy, which is mind-blowing. Here is where BTMC falls on the graph. The last player I'll be going over in 2021 is someone named Reed Cat, And this is also one of the most heartbreaking plays on the map. A one miss from a slider. Not even a slider break, he just missed the slider. Oh, a reverse choke at the beginning of the map. I, I just, oh, wow, that's... It's so sad. 3,365 combo, only one miss, and 99.16% accuracy. Literally just a hair away from full comboing the map. This is where he ranks on the graph. And, well, damn. What, what's, what's next? I've gone over like, what, 15 different players or something at this point? <laughs> I, I, I can't keep track. My head is spitting. Oh, wait. Do you remember how I talked about there being a $3,000 bounty placed on the map for the first person to full combo it? Well, 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 my dear beautiful viewer who has such amazing memory. Shall we get into it? On February 1st, 2022, a tweet went up to the public. A bounty was set up for $1,100 for the first person to full combo Yomiyori. Reed Cat was instantly on board with that. But after this tweet, not much progress was made on the map. February went by, March went by, April, May, radio silence for one player known for his speed and uh, being an absolute weirdo, uh, Utami came into the scene. Uh, yeah, so just want to say that I know this guy was involved with some weird drama. I'm not going to get into it, and I almost thought about not putting a score up here because I just don't want to be associated with it. But for the sake of the history of this map, I'm just going to go over it without any fluff. On June 23rd, 2022, Utami set this score. 3,848 combo, 15 misses at the end hurdle from how nervous he was, and 97.32% accuracy. I'll just leave it there. Uh, this is where Utami ranks. After this play, the bounty started to rise. On June 30th, overnight, the bounty went from $1,100 to $1,500, then to $2,227, and then shortly after to $3,333. The highest bounty ever placed on an Osu map. $3,000 plus dollars was now on the line for the first person to finally beat this map and full combo it. This sent the community into a storm. One of the best players at the time who held the number one rank for I think maybe the longest per period of time surpassing White Cat, uh, Emrek decided to take a stab at it. I don't think Emrek needs much of an introduction uh, considering how well known he is at this point. An insane child prodigy, reaching rank 1 at 14 years of age, which, god damn, wait, he would have only been 3 years old when Cookie Z first took number 1? What? What? I mean, Emrek was only 14 when he became number 1 in the world. Uh, who? What the hell is Emrek? Anyway. <laughs> This absurd player was popping out scores left and right, dominating the leaderboards, and he decided to attempt the Yomiyori bounty. And on the 4th of July, America Day, Emrek set this play. A one miss. One! With one little slider break at the end. 3,499 combo. One miss and an insane 99.31% accuracy. Oh, it was so close! But no cigar. And the one who was going to hold that cigar ended up with it not so long after. 
But here is where Emrek ranks on the graph. I think before we get to the end of this long story that is Yomi Yori, we should take a look back at where we came from to get here. From Gaze McGee back in 2017 till now, the map has obviously seen some drastic progress to finally being beaten. 28 misses, down to 0 misses and only slider breaks, S ranks that were almost impossible to fathom with how difficult the map is, and slowly, but surely, someone finally pulled away with the crown. On the 4th of July, 2022, a player named Karcher decided to step in and set the impossible. Zero misses. He had hit all the difficulty spikes perfectly and ended off the score with 4,353 combo, zero misses, no slider breaks, and a mind-blowing 99.6% accuracy. It was finally over. It was over. Karcher had done the impossible, finally beating the map and claiming the bounty that he was oh so deserved. Or did he? See, Karcher didn't actually record this play and use a hand cam, so by the rules of the bounty, he actually wouldn't be able to claim it. All that hard work, finally beating a 5 year old map and full comboing it, but not being able to reap the rewards for being the first person to do it. He indeed won, but at what cost? $3,000 apparently. That was until he, uh, he did it again. Yeah. <laughs> Karcher actually FC'd the map twice, a day after he FC'd it the first time. <laughs> Insane, J just, <laughs> what? A map that couldn't get FC'd gets FC'd again by the same guy? <laughs> oh, I love it. So in the end, Karcher did have his happy ending and he got his well-deserved bounty money. This is where the man who FC'd the map ranks on the graph, sitting high and above everyone else who came before him. The journey to get here was really fun, but it was finally over. Yomiyori is one of those unique maps to Osu's history, spanning a legacy over five years full of top players throwing plays at it just to be the one to achieve that legendary full combo. It's funny how after all that time, one man managed to FC the map twice after many countless chokes and misses beforehand. Osu has changed drastically over the years, clearly. This map just showcases how eventually that was believed to be impossible can eventually be beaten and how over time, people can get so good at the game to beat the unbeatable. Oh, and I would love to have one more player to this graph actually, as well, before we end off this video. Raiko How, right? Right? Ryoko How? Ryoko How? Yeah, the second player to FC the map. He missed one slider end, but still. A year after Karcher set his play, another player finally FC'd the map in October of 2023. I hope this drills the point that this map is insanely hard. <laughs> With only two FCs on the leaderboards after seven years of the map being out. Like I said before, Osu has changed drastically over the years now. Players are FCing star ratings that were impossible to even think of just years ago. People are setting plays on maps that don't even make sense. People are enlarging their PPs to greater heights than ever thought possible. <laughs> I love that sentence. But this video is long enough and needs to end. Thank you all for watching. It's uh, my first attempt on a video essay on Osu and what better than Yomiyori. Hopefully it was entertaining and if I left out some players on the graph that you wish I covered, I'm, I'm sorry but I hope you could see that I tried to include everybody. This video was fun to make and to learn some After Effects for, so hopefully it looked all right. It's a learning experience for me. But if there's another Osu map that you think needs covering, I'd love to look into it. And yeah, that's all for me. Um, thank you all. And hey, wait, 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 what the? Uh, wait, some someone just set a new, a new play on it? There, there was now, uh, wait, three days ago there was an FC on it?
What? I, um, okay, so we're adding, uh, we're adding someone else to the graph, too. Uh, Fragrance of Page. <laughs> um, I, I was not expecting that to happen during this recording. So, uh, someone else FC'd the map. So now there's three people who have FC'd Yomiuri. Uh, this, the score popped up three days ago. That's, okay. Alright, for real, this is a buy now. 